Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is February 7th, 2020. Um, I got about five different seg- segments here for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. And let me go ahead and get started. Um, first segment is entitled Officiating College or Pro. Very inconsistent. And here's what I wrote about that. Officiating college or pro. Very inconsistent. Without a doubt, it is very inconsistent. You could have the exact penalty in two different games and get two different outcomes. It's crazy. You can't call penalties in big games. Why not? If a penalty is committed, you call it, no matter the stage, no matter the circumstances, no matter what's on the line. Sometimes refs, referees just do what they want instead of just calling the game right down the middle. Referees have to be held accountable for their mistakes. Also, um, you can ask New Orleans about referees making mistakes. You can't ignore fouls or penalties and you can't do makeup calls. College referees are more consistent than NFL referees. We need we need officiating in our game, but not if it's um, not if the calls um, take over the game. Um, every game matters. Officiate the game like every game matters, because fans pay big money to go to these games. All right, and here's my thoughts on that. Um, you know, sometimes the referees make the right call and sometimes they don't make a call at all. I just think it's just widely inconsistent. Um, that's just my thought. Um, you know, sometimes they'll make the call. And, you, you know, it's the right thing to do. And then other times they'll just swallow the whistle. And... You know, the old fra- the old phrase is let them play. You know, it is what it is. The George Kittle thing was pass interference without a doubt. Um, but the Kyle Rudolph thing wasn't. They didn't call it. Now, I'm glad they didn't call it because I didn't want to see New Orleans again in the playoffs. I mean, we, um, the 49ers, we dodged New Orleans because I think they could have got us the second time around. Um, But it is what it is, man. Um, So let me know what you think about that segment. All right. And next segment is entitled, What if college football had a salary cap or a star cap? All right. And here's what I wrote about that. What if college football had a salary cap or a star cap? Can you hear the roar coming from the SEC fans or Clemson fans? Um, they say the most players you can sign in a class is 25, but I've seen more than that sign, but let's stick with 25. So I'll say you can have five, five stars, eight, four stars and unlimited three stars until you reach the, um, recruiting class amount of 25. This would create parity like no other in college football. I can hear all those SEC boosters going mad. The um, doormats of the Power Five could be somewhat competitive now. Um, You would have the five-star players spread out all over the country instead of one uh, university getting them all. That would be awesome to me. I could see Nick Saban's head turning cherry red right now. Um, You know, he hates losing anything, especially recruits. He gets more four stars than anybody. All right. A sal, I mean, uh, a star cap. So uh, I think Clemson's got like six, five stars and like 10 or 15, four stars. I mean, that's great. That's outstanding, man. But if you actually put a limit on that, 
I just wonder what other teams would look like. That's just it's just an idea. <laughs> It'll never happen because money runs college football. So. Um, so it'll never happen, but it's just food for thought. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that segment. All right. And, um, a, the next segment is entitled a recruit said Florida state is Florida state. Is this shade or is it a compliment? And here's what I wrote about that. A recruit said Florida state is Florida state shade or compliment. Let's start with shade. It's shade because we stunk for the last three years. The Florida Strait administration being cheap. Um, The boosters not writing the check. Losing to all your rivals back in back to back years. If it was shade, it was real. Um, It might have been a compliment based on tradition. Three national championships, multiple NFL players, several Hall of Famers, the mystique of Bobby and the mystique of Bobby Bowden. There are lots of positives at Florida State. Unfortunately, the football team isn't a part of that right now. Florida State is Florida State, quotation marks, could go either way. Florida State football team has to believe that. When a recruit, excuse me, when a recruit says it, um, Florida State is Florida State, quotation marks, is a slight to me. Um, I don't think if you're if you're a Florida State fan, you could take it any other way based on the last three years. Um, I mean, we've lost some luster, man. And I just really felt like. You know, when Jimbo was asking for the stuff that he was asking for and he was leveraging uh, other jobs against Florida State to get whatever, that's really when the downhill started, when the down, you know, downturn started um, after he won that national championship. That's that's when the, you know, the nonsense started. Um, He just felt like, you know, I won a national championship with 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 uh with with really no help because i did all the recruiting so he just said in order to keep this up you know i need i need i need sec type stuff and uh you know when the recruit said florida state is florida state i take it as florida state is cheap and they always gonna be cheap (laughs) That's just how I took it, man. So, you know, when recruits say stuff like that, you have to, uh, you got to pay attention. You got to read between the lines, you know. And uh, because he could have very easily said, hey, Florida State is still a great place to play football. And then that just would have summed it right up for everybody. But he didn't say that. So we can't take it like that. So let me know what you think about that segment. And I'm going to move on to the next segment, which is entitled, I really hate cover three. I really hate cover three. And here's what I wrote about that. I really hate cover three. If I don't have Ed Reed or Earl Thomas playing center field, I don't want to play this coverage. You are supposed to stay as deep as the deepest, but I I routinely see wide receivers getting behind safeties and scoring in this defense the strong safety is basically a additional linebacker to help with the run he usually has curl to flat responsibility so if so if you're cam chancellor who played this defense most of his career this would be a great defense for you and it was the corners have to be tall and lanky with long arms and can run seattle had the perfect model for this uh, defensive coverage. Uh, Browner, Sherman, Chancellor, and Thomas. You must have a you must have a really good pass rush and fast linebackers who can play coverage well. This scheme won them a Super Bowl, Seattle. But if your DBs don't measure up physically, run another scheme. 
All right, this was the scheme that the San Francisco 49ers tried to run, and Richard Sherman got exposed by Sammy Watkins yet again. Devontae Adams got him. Uh, Minnesota didn't really get him. Uh, but I'm not trying to say that Richard Sherman is a bad player, but I don't think in his whole career he's been the type of guy that can run stride for stride with a, a elite, speedy receiver. And Sammy Watkins, say what you want. He he <laughs> he's always been fast. I mean, he even when he was at Clemson, he was fast. So, um, you know, I felt like in this particular situation, um, cover four would have been better. You play cover three. When the other team doesn't have a receiver that can take the top off of a defense, or you got a you got a Ed Reed or Earl Thomas back there that knows not to let you know Tyree Kill break their cushion. I mean, you let Tyree Kill break your cushion, then you're just basically on roller skates. It it looked like Jimmy Ward was on uh on a sheet of ice <laughs> when when Tyree Kill caught that. 40 yard bomb that's what it looked like I, I just i could never it just boggles the mind i would have never in a million years played cover three i would have played man to man with two safeties over the top first okay at least if tyreek hill runs by richard sherman or any other db you got a safety that knows to stay as deep as the deepest but hey i'm just a fan man what do I know? <laughs> um, so let me know what you think about that segment. And my next segment is entitled, um, I hate when athletes take the high road after a loss. All right. And here's what I wrote about that. I hate when athletes take the high road after a loss. Let, let the emotion out. Tell America how you feel about it men have been taught not to be emotional not to um react after a loss you know you can say whatever you want about nick bosa he was crying after the game i respect that I, I totally respect that i don't make fun of him for that the man loves the game he wanted to win he's upset you know what i'm saying that's the raw emotion of the game man the finality of losing a Super Bowl he was upset um but I'm just saying after a, a, a loss what what options do you have as a coach or a player just walk off the field and act like it doesn't matter you put you put uh six months of your life into this to get to this point and you lost so yeah I'm gonna be emotional <laughs> um the internet has uh, has a greatest hits of players and coaches meltdowns um, and they show this stuff all the time whether it's a coach overreacting to the media or in the game or whatever um, the closest thing I ever had to a coach acting this way was in high school he never had a meltdown but he would get on you if you messed up I mean like really bad <laughs> And, um, you know, he would make you run immediately after doing something wrong in practice. Um, and he would just be like, run until I get tired. Um, my point is, you know, it's okay to be mad if you, if a mistake is made during the game or even after a loss, um, especially in a title game, in a title game raw. I mean, the emotion to me it has to be raw and uncut within reason um the high road is overrated this is a politically correct world and i can't stand i can't stand when people try to um you know make a person sit in a box with their emotions it's just not fair um but i just don't ever see this changing because of the the fake politically correct world that we live in 
Um, so let me know what you think about that segment. Um, that's going to conclude this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's available on YouTube. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please scroll down to the description, click on one of the links, rate, review, and subscribe. Um, I have a, a lot of people that listen to this on a daily basis, and I really appreciate your support. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it. If you could, please rate review and subscribe by clicking on one of those links i would greatly appreciate it and as always go nose